do you do when God knocks on your door? What would you do? You know, doors are very interesting. Some doors are very plain, some are very ornate. Look at this door. See, you would never know what was behind that door. Now, the interesting thing about doors is that they lead somewhere. They can open up to us new horizons, new vistas, new experiences. And um, Jesus, you know, spoke of himself as being the door. In fact, in John chapter 10 and verse 9, he said, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. Often, a door gives us entry into whole new worlds. You know, in Revelation chapter 4, and verse 1, when John was on the Isle of Patmos, it says this, it says, After this I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven. See, a door was opened in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was as of a trumpet, talking with me, which said, come up hither, and I will show you things which must be hereafter. See, a door was opened, and God wanted to show him things. Other doors, you know, are a little mysterious, and they can be somewhat daunting. Now, when we know that God can knock on the door, or knock on our door, and if we open it, it can lead us somewhere. It can lead us to a whole new world of revelation, insight, understanding, a new walk with God. The Bible tells us that, behold, I stand at the door and knock, and if we open that door, he will come in, and have fellowship with us. See, a door opens to a whole new realm, a whole new dimension, a whole new experience, a whole new walk with God. But the trick is learning to hear that knock on your door and secondly, opening the door. In this session, we're going to look at how to recognize when God knocks on your door, that voice of the knock on your door and how to open it. Talk to me. Talk to me I'm waiting in the morning I wait throughout the day How sweet it is for me to hear All the things you have to say In the last session we looked at the language of mood or the language of feeling very, very important. We recognize the importance of that and how that can, God can convey how he feels by imparting to us the same feeling. Okay, now today we're going to look at another concept in Scripture is when God knocks on your door. All right, now let's read some Scriptures. In Revelation chapter 3 and verse 20, it says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him. I will sup or have fellowship with him and he with me. Now here, Jesus is saying, I will come to you. I will knock on your door. If you will open the door, I will come in and talk to you. Now that's exactly what this scripture is saying. Two things are here. Jesus comes and knocks on your door. One, you must hear the knock. You must recognize it when it happens. And then how God knocks on your door. And so, how do we hear that knock? What kind of a knock is it? Does it sound like someone knocking on your door? Not normally, no. God uses many ways to get your attention to knock on your door. But usually he'll only use a few with you, you know, just a handful which you will get used to. And so we're going to look at a few ways in which God does this. First of all, God will often use this method where a sense of the presence of God 
will break your sleep during the night and you just wake up now and you wake up and you wake up alert you wake up realizing that something has wakened you and if you're still for a while you'll begin to sense you know the presence of the the Lord that's a knock on the door now if you will open the door he will come in we'll talk about opening in a moment but first you have to learn to recognize that knock when it happens now secondly it can be a song the Bible talks about it giving you a song in the night now it can be in the night or it can be during the day but you know you wake with the song going over in your mind or during the day now that's a knock you didn't start it you see it was spontaneous so you didn't start that you didn't originate it it was just there it appeared on the inside of you and after after quite a while you have realized you were singing this song now that's a knock it goes over and over in your mind have you ever had this experience you're walking down the street somewhere or maybe you were just at home and you kind of just sense felt somebody called your name you ever had that experience you think oh just dreaming you know just and you just brush it off and go on often in fact nearly always that is the Lord who called your name he's knocked on your door and the way that he knocked on your door was by just calling your name God's knocking sometimes also it can be aware of smell a fragrance the fragrance of the Lord suddenly the fragrance of the Lord comes into the room it can be just very slight you pick it up or even when you're walking down the street or in the car or wherever you just smell a fragrance he's come and the fragrance of the Lord it came with his presence and you picked it up first in your spirit but that's transferred quickly to your your senses which is one of the five senses is smell and so you begin to f just smell something you see again that's a knock on your door and most Christians just go through life oblivious to all of this when God is trying to get their attention and he said I'll come and I'll knock on your door if you open the door We'll have fellowship. I'll talk to you. Now, some, sometimes it happens in this way. For no reason at all, you find that you have a sudden hunger for the Lord. A sudden drawing towards the Lord. A sudden desire to be alone with the Lord. A sudden hunger. It's hard to explain. You know, the Lord will quite often draw you that way with a hunger. That's a knock. Now, there are many many other ways but you got to learn for yourself after a while through experience and a and, and bit of trial and error how God knocks on your door the thing is you got to hear the knock but that is not enough you have to open the door two things now how do you open the door in other words you have to learn how to respond to that knock in other words you wake in the night with a sense of the presence of the Lord you just wake up and it's broken his it be just slight but it it breaks your sleep how are you gonna open the door well you get up you get out of bed because if you stay in bed for sure you're gonna go back to sleep so you get up you get alone quiet somewhere in the house and you say what is it Lord just pray for a while read the scriptures read the word just wait until God begins to communicate with you you see it's the same with the awareness of the fragrance of the Lord you know that smell the Lord has drawn near he lets you smell him in order to let you know that he's here and he wants to talk to you then you have to turn aside you have to say yes Lord what is it speak Lord for your servant heareth like Samuel was told to say by Eli turn aside 
stop for a moment, say, what is it, Lord? Just cultivate a bit of sense of the conscious presence of the Lord and let him begin to talk to you. A certain hunger for God can draw us that way. Okay, learn to respond. When you sense, when you're awakened with a sense of his presence, get up. You see, if you don't draw aside, if you don't stop for a moment and say, what is it, Lord? This is what happens. You miss it. Now, in the Song of Solomon's, um, chapter 2 and verse 8, it says, The voice of my beloved, behold, he cometh, leaping upon the mountains, skipping upon the hills. My beloved is like a roe or a young heart. Behold, he standeth behind our wall and looketh forth at the windows, showing himself through the lattice. My beloved spoke and said unto me, Rise up, my love, my fair one, and come away. So the Lord drew near, wanted fellowship, wanted to talk with her. She was too slow. She didn't respond. And he left. Now these are very interesting scriptures. You know, next she goes looking for him. But she can't find him. Song of Solomon chapter 3 in verse 1. It says, By night on my bed I sought him whom my soul loveth. I sought him, but I found him not. I will arise and go about the city and in the streets and in the broadways. I will seek him whom my soul loveth. I sought him but I found him not. You see, you have to open the door. He knocked on her door, but she didn't respond. She left it until it was too late, and the Lord had gone. You open the door by responding adequately to that knock, that presence of the Lord. It's the same, you know, with a song in the night. You get up, but you don't just get up. Listen to what the, the words of the song are because the message is in the words of the song. And it's like the Lord is singing to you or he's conveying his message or his word to you through singing a song which is resounding in your spirit and coming over and over in your heart. Now, the, the message is contained in the words of the song. And let's not be over-religious, it doesn't have to be a Christian song. It is the words that are the issue here, not whether it's a Christian song or not. It is the words that he is speaking to you. And, um, you know, you can always go even through half a day, which a few hours after getting up, and you still you have a song going over and over. You ever had that? You kind of can't get this thing out of your head. And after a while, you realize that this song is going over and over. And the penny drops. It's God. Now, hang on. What are the words of that song? What are you saying to me, Lord? And the message is in the words. You stop and think. You open the door by meditating on the words of the song and the message that he's conveying to you that way. You see, it's all in the response. He stands at the door and knocks. If you open the door, he will come in and have fellowship with you. You know, calling your name. What is it, Lord? Just stop for a moment. Sudden hunger. It's all the same, you see. Learn to recognize the knock when it comes. That's part of it. And that's sometimes the hard part. Because many people just don't hear it when God knocks on their door. They don't know what that, how that kind of knock sounds like. It can sound like many, many ways. And you see, you can develop a real place of communion with the Lord if you learn to hear the knock and you respond adequately. Open the door by responding adequately. You know, my wife Jo often has an experience of waking up and seeing a flag of a certain country just as she's waking up. And it took us a while to cotton on what this was about. But sure enough, some time later, I would get an invitation to that country. And because we'd been alerted to it, I didn't have to pray too much about it. You see? Um, it was a visionary thing. Just waking up and a visionary thing, she would see a flag of a particular nation. 
Sometimes we'd have to look it up in, the, in some kind of an encyclopedia to find out what nation the flag belonged to. And, um, you know, there are no words spoken, but the message is conveyed. Jesus prayed that he wanted to be one with us, that he prayed that we would be one with him. His desire was that we would have the same heartbeat, feel the same as. The witness of the Spirit is to feel the same as. His feelings would be our feelings. His desires would be our desires. You see, this is the language of heaven. Often in heaven, this is the only communication you receive that can be just feelings. It's a major part of the language of heaven. Now the Bible tells us in Galatians 5 and verse 16, I, this I say then, walk in the Spirit. We have to walk in the Spirit by responding to spiritual sensations. Spirit being alerted in our spirit. Galatians 5.25, if we live in the Spirit, let us walk in the Spirit. Be, become aware of spiritual sensations and what they mean. Spirit activated moods and feelings and what they mean. Just drawing this to a close, you know, one day I was driving down a freeway and I drove off a ramp and I had, as I drove off, coming fairly fast, I drove off this ramp and I had a sensation and for a while I had to think, what did that mean? Because I'd had it before and it was an alert to danger. It was an alert that was just, be careful. But I was driving, you know, fairly fast on the off-ramp and uh, of, this, of this freeway, just coming on the off-ramp. And so when I had this sensation, it wasn't time for God to convey words to me. It was a very quick feeling which activated my foot, which went to the brake. And I put the brake on fairly hard, came round the curve, and a petrol tanker had jackknifed right across the road. If I hadn't picked up that sensation, I would have gone straight into that petrol tanker. Now, if we're going to survive these end times, we're going to have to be able to feel how God feels and sense how he senses things. We have to have to, going to be able to walk with him in this way, becoming friends with an invisible spirit, you see? Becoming friends in that way. It requires practice. It requires sensitivity. You know, praying in the Spirit strengthens your inner man. It is important that you spend much time praying in the Spirit. And the Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians 14 and 4, He that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifieth himself. The words edify there mean to strengthen or build up. In other words, your spirit is made strong, strengthened, built up. It functions better. It becomes more sensitive. The signals coming via the Lord to us will be picked up a lot more easily when your spirit is strong and sensitive. You need to pray much in the spirit. Now when I talk about praying in the spirit, I'm talking about praying in other tongues, praying in a language of heaven, and not in English, just praying in the spirit. Because when you're praying in the spirit, there's a flow of life into your human spirit which strengthens it, builds it up, your sensitivity increases. And this is a very, very important part of learning to recognize these sensations. Pray much in the spirit to keep your spirit strong. You know, one of the problems we have, you know, the real danger is knowing the Bible, but not experiencing it. A lot of people know the Bible, being taught about things in the Bible, but they don't experience it. It's not experiential in their lives. 1 Corinthians 2.14, But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. Spiritual communication has to be discerned. You have to be able to pick it up or to recognize it, discern it. Learn to understand it when it is occurring. You know, another time... I was getting phone calls, and it was the guy was the wrong number, and uh, the guy was that on the other end of the line was a Samoan, and after you know this happened maybe half a dozen times, I had to kind of 
tell the guy not to ring me anymore. He was just ringing me with a Samoan accent. And um, it was just not, didn't want me. He was just getting the wrong number. Then it suddenly, penny dropped. Samoa is calling you. Samoa is calling you. And I thought, oh, that's kind of, you know, interesting. Two, three weeks later, I had a phone call. You guessed it, from Samoa, would I come and minister? It was a time in my life when I was extremely busy. I had had so much on my plate. If, it got, if I hadn't been alerted to this fact, I would have turned down that invitation because I was so busy. But you see, that communication came that way. It was a knock. It was a communication from the spirit world. God was alerting me to something. So when the invitation came, I wouldn't have to pray about it. I would know it was the law. See, sensitivity, sensitivity. God uses many vessels in order to speak to us. You know, he used a donkey or an ass. It can be a newspaper. It's just a few words in a newspaper. It can be a word that are from our enemies. You know, it can be a chance word. You know, it's very, very interesting. We have to become sensitive to that. Be sensitive. Look, learn, and pray. Now, spiritual communication. It's a skill to be learned. And you have to pray and ask the Holy Spirit to teach you, help you to recognize the way that he's communicating with you. Ask him to help you recognize just one way in which he will knock on your door. When you get used to that, he might use another way. And usually there's three or four ways he'll use to get your attention. But they'll be sometimes unique to you, but not necessarily. But the big thing is to recognize it is the Lord knocking on your door. He wants to come and talk to you. Now, can he trust you to pick up these signals? And can he trust you to respond properly to him? And if you do, you'll become great friends with the Lord. And he'll be able to communicate with you in this way. Walking in the spirit with Jesus is not hard. But we have to learn just how to do it. God bless you.